concerns. This is a five acre property and there's all kinds of things on this property. Today, the sheriff, without taking any questions or going into any details, explained to us what they found. Uh, we have been able to uncover what looks like the possible remains of a human being on the property. Those words Friday afternoon from Osceola County Sheriff Russ Gibson, who says deputies, detectives and forensic teams have been combing the rear of this property on Hickson Avenue in St. Cloud since Wednesday. It's the same property where they've been looking for evidence relating to Nicole Montalvo, who was last seen at this house Monday around 5 p.m. after dropping off her eight year old son at the home where his father and grandparents live. The family's been notified that we have notified uh, a potential body here at the home. We don't know if it's male or female at this point. The medical examiner will determine that as well as manner and cause of death. The sheriff says while the weather has been a bit of a hindrance in their investigation on this five acre property, they are working through it and this scene on Hickson Avenue remains active. The scene is in the uh, beginning stages and it may take us quite some time to uh, uh, finish what we're doing here to make sure that we uh, don't leave any stone unturned. At this time, there is no suspect or person of interest in regards to the missing mother. Detectives have reached out to Nicole Montalvo's estranged husband. We have been in contact with him and he has not co cooperated with the investigation. He says the couple has a history of domestic violence. Well, one year ago, before Montalvo disappeared, she told deputies that her estranged husband and another woman attacked her and threatened her life. Now that woman, that other woman involved in this situation is in jail. Earlier this month, records show Nicole Montalvo wrote a letter to a judge trying to get restrictions against her husband eased up. It comes after he allegedly attacked her at a Walmart parking lot. We're not identifying either Montalvo's husband or the woman who was accused along with him because they are not facing charges in her disappearance. But according to a criminal complaint, Montalvo told investigators last year she met her estranged husband in a parking lot and then was attacked. She said a woman with her husband pulled her out of the car and threw her to the ground. Her husband, quote, grabbed Nicole's head and attempted to break her neck. She told investigators he, quote, slapped Nicole across the face several times because he didn't like that Nicole was talking to a friend via text and for taking his son. The woman with him allegedly put a knife to Montalvo's throat and threatened to kill her. The husband pleaded no contest to some of the charges in that case, but the woman who was also arrested took it to trial. During that, a transcript shows Montalvo said of the alleged female attacker, quote, she just brought him down a dark path. She's not a very good person. Even so, that woman was found not guilty or acquitted of all charges. West too learned that same woman was booked into the Osceola County Jail yesterday for an unrelated violation of probation charge. A estranged father-in-law, Clay. Justin and Kirsten, we have just learned from new court paperwork filed earlier today that Angel Rivera has lost his fight for his bond to be lowered so he could get out of jail. Rivera is the father-in-law of Nicole Montalvo. Osceola County deputies say her remains were found in different areas of Rivera's property back in October. Investigators say witnesses watched as Montalvo's estranged husband, Christopher Otero Rivera, and his father, Angel Rivera, used an excavator rented by Angel in the back of their yard. Otero Rivera and his father, Angel, were both arrested in October, but the state attorney's office has not formally charged the two with murder yet. Earlier this month, Angel Rivera was granted $350,000 bond on other charges that were filed weeks after his initial arrest. But his attorney had said at the time that bond was unreasonable. The argument was Rivera's charges, like abuse of a body and failure to report a death, would normally be lower. But the Florida's 5th District Court of Appeal denied Honor that the petition. the 33-year-old mother. Deputies found her remains during an extensive search. Now her estranged husband and his father are facing murder charges. Matt, while Montalvo's husband remains locked up here, her family spoke before a crowd of hundreds honoring her life and legacy. Even in darkness, the St. Cloud Park was illuminated as hundreds gathered at one of Nicole Montalvo's favorite spots. She would be absolutely amazed to see all this turnout for her. Her father. She's always a part of me 
And I know she's here right now, seeing everyone here, and she's ecstatic. Her twin brother and other family address this sea of purple and black, in part to raise awareness for those who have suffered from domestic violence. This is something that affects a lot of people out there, and we ask that you, you know, take some action, you know, use this as a, as a starting board to, to push the, the message in the fight against domestic violence, like Eddie was saying, because we know that there's other people out there suffering from this. As all of this was going on, investigators and the medical examiner's office continued to search for yet another day at these rural Osceola County properties owned by the Rivera family. You've been arrest, uh, arrested on a warrant. As Chris Rivera and his father Angel face first degree murder charges in the death of Montalvo, Chris's estranged wife. Investigators say they have matched human remains found on the property to the 33 year old who went missing one week ago after she dropped her son off here. As for Montalvo's family, they say their focus is now on raising that eight year old boy. We know that this is just the beginning and we want to honor Nicole. We want to, you know, do right by raising Elijah to be the best young man he can be. A family member talks about the tragic events that happened at that home near St. Cloud. Investigators say Nicole Montalvo's body was dismembered. Her husband, his father, his mother, one of his brothers, all have been arrested. Tonight, another brother is sharing his story. He sat down with News 6's Eric Sandoval in an interview you'll see only here on News 6. This man's name is Julio Rivera, and he says he actually ran away from his family years ago. He says he found out about the murder of his sister-in-law, Nicole Montalvo, on ClickOrlando.com. Tonight, he's remembering her as a good mother, but also as a victim of his father. All this is surreal, but I'm not surprised. Julio Rivera says his heart was broken when he saw what was unfolding around the house that he once called home in Osceola County. Sheriff's investigators uncovering the remains of his brother's wife, Nicole Montalvo. When I first met her, she was fun to be around. She was like a light, and she was very outgoing, energetic. And we would go to the beach, we would go to the pool in the neighborhood I lived in, and that's when I first met her and the first time I met my nephew. And after a long time, I finally like felt happy, you know, that my brother got married and has his own family. I had no idea that the skeletons that they were carrying around and the secrets that she was holding inside. Court records show Julio's brother, Christopher Rivera, had a history of domestic violence with Montalvo. He is now charged with her murder and being held at the Osceola County Jail. Their father, Angel Luis Rivera, is also charged with her murder, a man Julio describes as a violent man. Everybody knows he's abusive. And what's missing from this equation that I believe possibly led up to, I guess, his final snap or whatever, mm -hmm. is that he was never put in check. He was never, I guess, for better words, put down mm -hmm. to protect society mm -hmm. and his own children. Rivera says he ran from his father and the violence he says he endured years ago. He says he wishes Montalvo could have done the same thing. My sister-in-law, she didn't get to escape. She just, she had to be tough for my nephew. And so knowing that she fought to her death, All of that she's information. a He is live at the state attorney's office in downtown Orlando. So Eric, what did you find out? Well, Lisa, we got video interviews of her estranged husband, his father, his mother, and a lot more. In their own words, we hear their take of what may have happened to Montalvo. What we don't get is an explanation of how her remains ended up on their property in St. Cloud. We just want her back home, you know, home, safe and sound. This interview with Christopher Otero Rivera was conducted by Osceola County Sheriff's Detectives on October 24th, when his estranged wife, Nicole Montalvo, was still listed as missing. My son been asking for her, and, and as all I can tell him, oh, she's working, buddy, you know, she's working late. Detectives ask him for his cooperation. You'll get as much as I can give you, yeah, of yeah. course, but 
My dad, he knows a lot more because he's been the one that's been dealing with her. The interview is one of hundreds of files released by the state attorney's office. They included photos of the Rivera home on Hickson Avenue, the holes investigators dug in their backyard, and disturbing images of buried remains, which we're not going to show. They also include calls made from jail by Rivera's father, Angel. First, we're going to have to find some place to go, man. Every time he comes to the house, he brings trauma. I try to help him. Okay, hold on, stay on the phone. Otero Rivera's interview ends abruptly, though, after he gets a call from someone very concerned that he doesn't have an attorney. Hey, what's up? I guess it's time to go. This Montalvo's estranged husband and his father. Now it comes after a feud between the state attorney and the Osceola County Sheriff all boiled over. News 6's Troy Campbell is live outside the state attorney's office with more on the case. Florida State Attorney General Ashley Moody said that Friday morning's press conference here outside of the state attorney's office about the death of Nicole Montalvo, it made a private dispute between the state attorney and the Osceola County Sheriff public and personal. Now officials are asking for Governor DeSantis to step in and we're asking the governor what he plans to do next. It is my understanding that as we stand here today, the sheriff still does not know who actually killed Nicole Montalvo. State Attorney Aramis Ayala saying Osceola County Sheriff Russ Gibson rushed the murder case of Nicole Montalvo, a mother and wife found dismembered on this property in St. Cloud in October. Montalvo's estranged husband, Christopher Otero Rivera, and his father, Angel Rivera, were arrested for murder, but those charges were never filed by the state attorney's office. We advise the sheriff against arresting because the moment an arrest occurs, our time is limited to bring the killer to justice. In a letter Friday evening, Sheriff Russ Gibson wrote that he visited with Attorney General Ashley Moody last week at the state capitol to discuss the case after, quote, it became apparent that the state attorney's office was not interested in pursuing homicide charges. My office began exploring ways to get a second opinion. The sheriff went on to say that he believes, quote, justice can only be achieved in this case if it is given to the Office of Statewide Prosecution. Moody writing in a letter to Governor DeSantis saying that she met with Gibson and reviewed evidence in the case. She says her office intended to do the same with the Orange and Osceola state attorney, but Ayala canceled the meeting, writing, quote, it is safe to say the dispute between Sheriff Gibson and state attorney Ayala is now public, personal, and appears to be acrimonious. At this point, it's unclear if the case will stay with Ayala's office or how the governor will react. Each defendant took very different approaches as their trial got underway here this morning. This comes as the state says evidence will show both men are responsible for second degree murder. Opening statements began with the lead prosecutor taking jurors through the events that led up to the disappearance and death of Nicole Montalvo in 2019. The state talking about how she was going through a divorce with her estranged husband, Christopher Otero Rivera. Prosecutors say she dropped off the couple's son at her father-in-law, Angel Rivera's home. Her remains were later found nearby and on an adjacent property. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, they find more. And in fact, they find the severed head of Nicole Montalvo. While prosecutors say both men killed and dismembered Montalvo's body, they don't know how she was killed. The defense for Otero Rivera calling the evidence circumstantial and also pointing the finger at Otero Rivera's father. Um, he was unquestionably the boss of the Rivera family. He controlled things, he manipulated things and people. Otero Rivera's lawyer saying any compelling evidence would point to Angel Rivera. Rivera's attorney, however, did not offer an opening statement. The trial then moving to witnesses where Montalvo's mother took the stand. To your knowledge, was the divorce between your daughter and Christopher Otero Rivera ever made final? No, it's not. Today, jurors are also hearing from other people Montalvo had contact with the last day she was seen alive. We will be following the developments as the trial continues. It was Dr. Jennifer Nera's job to try to uncover how Nicole Montalvo was killed. She was the medical examiner who did the autopsy on Montalvo's remains after they were allegedly found dismembered at the St. Cloud home of her estranged husband, Christopher Otero Rivera, and his father, Angel. But she said she only received about half of Montalvo's entire body. There were a lot of small little fragments of bones, almost like the bones of a 
put through some kind of wood chipper or something. They were like just fragmented. Jurors were shown graphic pictures of those remains, including her head. Nara testified that some parts had cutting wounds that could have been from a knife, but because of the condition of the remains and because some were burned, she could not say exactly how Montalvo was killed. Otero Rivera's attorney seized on that. The thermal burns was not the cause of death, correct? The dismemberment was not the cause of death, correct? I believe it was not the cause of death. Charges. It comes as disturbing new details about Nicole Montavo's murder come to light, including her dismemberment. News 6's Nadine Giannis is following this case in Osceola County. And Nadine, the judge did give Rivera bond today. Yeah, it was a monumental day in court. Like you said, two hearings, a lot of things happening on the criminal justice side regarding the father charged with in connection with this death of Nicole Montalvo. But during those hearings was an important moment where the judge ruled to unseal documents that show the details of what happened to the St. Cloud mother found murdered. Uh, so the court will enter an order setting aside the order sealing the uh, uh, affidavit for search or arrest warrant. It was an early morning court hearing for Angel Rivera that the judge ruled to unseal the document that has him in handcuffs today. He and his son Christopher Otero Rivera, both suspects in the murder case of Nicole Montalvo. The unsealing of those documents revealing details and what happened to the St. Cloud mother. Detectives believing that on October 21st, when Nicole dropped off her son at the Rivera house, she was killed cut into pieces and buried on their property by Angel and Christopher, who is also Montavo's estranged husband. The motive? Detectives say Christopher was on house arrest for almost breaking her neck and strangling Montavo, according to the documents. Her parents telling detectives the relationship with her in-laws was also strained over custody of their son. The evidence? The document shows witnesses saw Angel and Christopher using a tractor to bury a hole at the back of their St. Cloud property where parts of her body was found. A GPS ankle monitor from Christopher's house arrest putting him at that site. And cell phone records show this was Montalvo's last text. Apologizing, saying, I made a big mistake. I need you and Wanda to take care of Elijah for a few days until I get things figured out. Please do this for Elijah. I'm with a friend that's going to help me get through this. Tell Elijah mommy loves him. However, her cell phone pinged at the Rivera house when this text. Do you know who killed her? Okay. Don't need these people on my the woman putting on a hat and not answering our questions is Wanda Rivera. Prosecutors believe her husband, Angel Rivera, and their son, Christopher Otero Rivera, murdered Christopher's wife, Nicole Montalvo, and buried her body on the family property late last year. Did you move her car? Did you help cover up her murder in any way, ma'am? Wanda is charged with accessory after the fact to murder. Prosecutors allege she moved Nicole's car and tried to get rid of the excavator used to bury Nicole's body after she was killed. Today in court, her attorney asked the judge for a separate trial for Wanda, separate from the two men facing second-degree murder charges. Because of the nature of the crime, um, Ms. Rivera would not be able to have a fair jury um, because the jury will confuse the issues. And but prosecutors argued most of the evidence is the same in all the cases, and there's no legal reason not to try the cases together. I cannot understand why we would call 50 witnesses or approximately 50 witnesses twice in a case where we have to prove the same thing in both instances. And the judge agreed. Prosecutors also revealed Angel Rivera came forward recently and blamed the entire murder on his son Christopher, but they don't necessarily believe him. So as it stands now, all three of them will go to trial together for charges related to the death of this 30-year-old mother. Anything at all you'd like to say to her family? No, I talked to the state attorney today, Lisa, and they tell me that her husband's violation of probation charge should keep him in jail for now. But this ha happened after a hearing where it was supposed to be a mini trial of sorts. Prosecutors were supposed to present all the evidence they had so far. Instead, that hearing lasted only two minutes.
A judge's decision to grant Christopher Otero Rivera's release from jail on his wife's murder charge shocked her family in court today. The court has no option under law but to uh, release the defendant on his recognizance as to this case. Nicole Montavo was last seen on October 21st. Her dismembered remains were found a few days later on five acres of land where her estranged husband and his parents lived in Osceola County. In court today, the state attorney's office decided not to present any of the evidence it has that Otero Rivera may have been involved in her murder. Why would the state not be presenting evidence to keep this person in custody? We took that question to New Six legal analyst Stephen Kramer, and he says it may have been the prosecution's strategy. You can envision a scenario in which the state wants to keep some of their cards close, right? They've got an ongoing investigation. They're trying to figure out, you know, who were the co-conspirators in this murder? Were there people outside of this family that helped out? Otero Rivera's attorney says she's going to fight to get him released from jail. But Kramer says it's not going to be that easy. I think it's probably premature to call this any meaningful victory. There is a long road ahead. There are very serious charges. The day has been centered around the testimony of Wanda Rivera, wife of Angel Rivera, and mother of Christopher Otero Rivera. She walked the jurors through where she was and who she saw on their property during the time period that investigators say Nicole Montalvo was reported missing. Do you recall learning that the remains of Miss Montalvo had been found buried on your property? I heard it in the news. Do you know how she ended up there? No. Wanda Rivera was called to testify in the case against her husband, Angel Rivera, and son, Christopher Otero Rivera. Both men are facing second-degree murder charges in the death of Nicole Montalvo, after investigators say her dismembered remains were found on their property in October of 2019. The prosecution asking questions about the Rivera property. Did you ever see Angel and Christopher in the back of the property? They worked back there, yes. Okay. Did you see them back there or did you have knowledge of them being back there on a daily basis? Yes. Do you have knowledge of anyone else being back there at all or on a regular basis besides Angel and Christopher? Not to my knowledge. Jurors also heard from a former cellmate of Christopher Otero Rivera. I'm going to say Chris and I were pretty good, we were pretty good acquaintances. I'm not going to say friends. I'm not on. Um, he was going to help bond me out whenever he got bonded out. And his bond hearing got denied, so he couldn't afford it. And so he bonded me out. He had his dad pay for it. The jailmate testifying before the court that Otero Rivera offered to help with his bail in exchange for a favor of planting drugs on Montalvo. And the cellmate's father took the stand, saying he met up with Angel Rivera to get the money for his son's bail. When the cellmate bonded out, he says he met up with Rivera. Describe that, that brief statement or conversation. Well, um, he was real adamant about when was I going to do it because he missed his grandson, so he was kind of like pushy. I told him, you know, I'm doing this on my own time. And he said uh, his words were, I'd rather her just disappear. And I kind of laughed it off and told him, you don't get that for 500 bucks. And then he told me he's got money. To Nicole's death. This is Nicholas Rivera in November after his arrest in Georgia on child pornography charges. He's the brother of Christopher Otero Rivera and the son of Angel Rivera, both suspects in the October murder of Chris's estranged wife, Nicole Montalvo. Her dismembered body found buried on two properties owned by the family. Nicholas Rivera claims he saw Nicole's body on the garage floor. The blood that you say that you saw, and then when you saw the body, where did the blood come from? It was here from what I recall. Rivera says he never saw his brother or father with a knife, but believes a knife was used to kill her. The detectives wonder out loud why Rivera just walked away. Dead and nobody trying to save her. Kids. And you let her be like that. And Chris didn't tell you what he did. Could you ask for an explanation? No.
Investigators wonder just how much of Rivera's story they can believe, since DNA testing of the garage floor yielded no blood matching Nicole Montalvo. They were also both sentenced to 15 and five years for their other two charges, which were abuse of a dead body and tampering with physical evidence. The investigation started back in October of 2019 after Montalvo was reported missing when she failed to pick up her eight-year-old from school. Otero Rivera and Montalvo had a son together, but they were separated at the time of her death. The two were going through a divorce when she dropped their son off at her father-in-law's home. Montalvo's remains were later found buried on the property owned by the Riveras. And that was followed by the arrests and an investigation spanning several months, which ultimately led...